Now, doing your rear brakes on your Honda Accord. Not really a big deal, just a bunch of springs and things. Now, if your drum gets stuck on, I'll show you what to do. Many foreign cars have drum removal tapped holes in their drums. You just get one of these metric bolts, put some grease on the end, and screw one in each hole. Turn them back and forth evenly, and that goes in and pushes on the drive back plate and pushes the drum off. Simple as that. A little bit of tapping with the hammer on the corner sometimes helps too. To prevent this problem in the future, you can put some grease around this edge and maybe a wee bit on the back plate, but not much because if that gets warm, it can fly out and get on your braking surface. Now kind of the rule of thumb is to know when to change your brakes is when your shoe thickness at the narrowest point, wherever that may be, is less than one and a half millimeters. Something else you should always check when you're doing this job is how good your wheel bearings are. They should feel sticky and like they're moving in honey. If you just give this a twirl and it keeps going and actually has a sound, they're going bad. They howl when you drive. You don't need many tools when you're doing this job. Side cutters, needle nose pliers, couple flat screw drivers, regular pliers, and your new brakes. First thing, check your drum surface. This one's perfect. If it's rusty or all scored, get them remachined or replaced. Now take your ordinary pliers, push down on these springy tabs, bite the little thing in the middle, and turn, and they'll pop off. Two of them. And they're off. Now go for the bottom spring next. Get the screwdriver under it, pry it over the tab, and then use the side cutters to grip it and unhook one end. Simple as that. Now lift the front shoe up and disconnect the adjuster spring. Now there's a big spring that holds the top part of the shoes together and it's hooked on right there. So take your ordinary pliers, bite part of the shoe, bite the hook on the edge of the spring and squeeze it and it'll fall through the hole and release. There, simple as that. Now choose the corresponding new shoe that has the pin in the right place. Now just unhook everything from the other shoe. Pretty easy, you just use your fingers, no tools. Now we've got to get a flat screwdriver in there and pry open that emergency brake clip to get the, the arm off the shoe. And you have to reuse this clip in most situations, they don't give you a new one. You just put it back on and squeeze it with pliers. Now it's really a great idea to take your lubricated anti-seize compound and brush on the surface points where the brake shoes rub every time they open and close so your new brakes don't squeak when they're moving. On this car there's six points. On most cars there's six points. Make sure you check all your springs and hardware when you do this job. If they look rusty and crappy, it's called a hardware kit for the brakes. Just go buy a new one. It's pretty cheap. Now that I've pried the e-brake clip off, there it is. It's a good idea to put my anti-seize compound on that pin and grab the corresponding shoe. Install it, put the washer on, and the clip back on and squeeze it with the pliers. Now this top part is called the brake adjuster and return spring. So turn this thumb wheel all the way back till the part goes back to its minimum distance sticking out. There. If the parts don't spin freely, take it apart. Sometimes you have to hold it in a vise and work it with pliers. When you get it all apart, put it in the power wire brush on your grinder and clean it all up. That thing. Then put this stuff on the threads and on the little shaft too. Now sit to your adjuster lever and the corresponding pin. And make sure the star wheel goes towards the arm on the lever, not the other way around. Slip this into the groove and hook the spring underneath. Now that's done. 
Now time to reinstall it back on there and put this squeezy clip back on the pin. Now for the other shoe, which is just hanging on the arm, lift it up and slip this groove into that groove while moving a spring out of the way. Then put the shoe on and put the pin back in and the springy clip on. Then when that's all on, you grab this spring with your side cutter and pull and hook it and put it in that hole. Now that the top mechanism is all assembled and that spring is hooked on, reinstall your brake adjuster spring up there and then little hole down there. Now for the last spring, the one that goes at the bottom of the shoes. Flip each shoe over top of the little metal plate so they're loosened towards you. Remember whether the spring went on this way or this way. On some cars it's important. On this car it went on this way. Then put one shoe behind the little plate. Then grab the other shoe and pull it and then hook it behind the other plate and make sure the spring goes behind this little tab. Done. Now to set them up for adjustment. First thing to do before you adjust these is check that there isn't a rust ridge on here. If there is, take your little hand grinder or angle grinder and just grind it off carefully without scoring up the surface. Then set the drum back on and push it on all the way. Of course while you're doing this whole job, make sure the emergency brake is off completely. Now that it's on all the way, see that it spins freely. It does, so that means I take it back off and turn that little star wheel with the screwdriver in my fingers and set it up till the brake just drags a little. Then I go inside the car and push the brake pedal so long as the other part isn't taken off on the other side or else your pistons will blow out. Then that resets up the shoes and I try to move it again and I set it so there's just the tiniest bit of drag and that's how you adjust the rear brakes after you're done assembling. If you don't adjust them right and there's too much slack, well then your pedal goes down too far and you might feel a little bit squishy. If you adjust it so there's not enough slack, well then you start driving and it starts slowing your car down. As that drum heats up and things expand, the brakes start coming on more just because of friction. Now that I pulled the drum back off, I just stick my shoe driver in there and ratchet that little star wheel a little bit and then put the drum back on and try again and see if I've got it right. It does take a bit of trial and error. Some cars have a rubber plug at the back that you can pull out and stick a shoe diver in and do this. On this car, that's ridiculous because it's got all the suspension in the way so you got to do it this way. Back on and adjusted right. During the whole time you're doing this rear brake process, make sure you don't get too carried away and cause the little pistons in the wheel cylinder to pop out and your fluid run out. Because then when you put them back together you hopefully can get the bleeder off and bleed the air out to make the brakes work properly again. Well, that job should have taken you 30 to 40 minutes to do both sides if you've done rear brakes before and are good with your hands. Sweet.